expectations of our heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When I was a young child and also in those early years of elementary school, there was a phrase that was pounded into our heads by parents and by teachers. And yes, I can remember way back then. <laughs> Perhaps some of you have heard this too. It's a very short phrase. Stop, look, and listen. It was a phrase that we were to repeat when we got to the corner of some intersection. Stop, look, and listen. And it must have worked because I still remember it. I use this as the basis today, and I'm going to expand this somewhat, to talk about stewardship. Stop, look, and listen. Stop and remember. Look to regard. Listen to respond. Stop and remember whose you are. Look to regard the bounty of God's gifts. Listen to respond to the voice of the Spirit. Stop and remember whose you are. As much as we hear various phrases and attribute them sometimes to certain people of, quote, being a self-made person, it is, of course, an illusion. There is no such thing. No matter how gifted, no matter how many gifts a person has, no matter how the amount of their ambition, the impact of creation itself, let alone other human beings, impacts all of us. Sometimes we like to think about being king or queen for a day. If only they would listen to me. And that itself, too, is an illusion. God is the center of being itself. God is to be our center. It's what we acclaim to as people of faith in this Christian faith of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose we are. We are God's. In the morning prayer service, among what's called the Invitatory Psalms, is Psalm 100, which is often called, out of its Latin beginning, the Jubilate Deo, which begins this way. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, his presence with the song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture, whose we are. Many years ago, when I served as canon of the cathedral in Oklahoma City, uh, we put together a study and a liturgy entitled Youth Affirmation. It was to be at the start of their teen years, which used to be when confirmation was, but then that has been pushed to a later time, and so it was meant to be that place to recognize that moment of transition in their life. And as part of that, there was a series of classes, and there was a pre-selected group of scripture passages, to which, when the liturgical part of this came about, they would read that passage, and then they would read their response to what they had just read before the entire congregation. It was an incredible experience of being taught. One I have always remembered. 
In her response, this is what she said. I am not only Jennifer, the daughter and the sister. I'm not only Jennifer, the student and the athlete. But I am Jennifer, a child of God, and that is my most important vocation. out of the mouths of babes. Stop and remember whose you are. Look in regard to the bounty of God's gifts. You heard me explain to the children as they looked at the puzzle on the solar system. But we heard it again from in Job of of God challenging Job after near the end of that whole book to, to enter into his creation of everything. We hear that in the psalm itself about God creating everything, but it's not just that God sent the world spinning and then sits back and sees what happens. It's how his works are meant to give life to everything in the creation. O Lord, the psalm says, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit and they are created and so you renew the face of the earth. This balance of creation of we breathing oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide, and yet there are plants and even animals in this world that change that carbon dioxide back into oxygen so that we have that oxygen to live. It is a balance that God created, and he provides food of all kinds, not only to the plants and the animals, but to us. Not only from the table of creation, but from this table, this holy table where the body and blood of Jesus is given to us to nourish our souls. The bounty of these gifts was wonderfully revealed in Kara's letter to the congregation of Trinity about this time of stewardship found in a muffin. If you know Julian of Norwich, reminded me of the, of the acorn that she saw and saw within it the majesty and the beauty and the workings of God here in a plain muffin. And yet that muffin, representing the work of many people, of farmers and harvesters and producers and bakers, and life shared in the broken muffin with one another. The bounty of God's gifts is endless. God's storehouse is an endless supply. It cannot be depleted. Look in regard to God's gifts in your life over and over, measure upon measure, press down, overflowing. Stop and remember who you are, whose you are. Look in regard to the gifts God gives you. Listen to respond to the voice of the Spirit. Listen. Tithing is part of stewardship. Please don't run for the exit. Please don't shut your mind off. Tithing is part of that because it has an initial step that is much like being married, much like being ordained. We don't say the vows in marriage or ordination with our last breath. We make it at the start before anything has happened, if you will, before the challenges, before the struggles, before the trials, before the joys and mercy and compassion and love and peace, before any of that happens, because it begins with a commitment. It's all a process of becoming. Tithing sets up to us 
to commit, to offer to God, what is God's anyway, but to offer to God that in our life for him to bless and use in a way that expands all of life into the whole of creation. A tither doesn't become one overnight or because all of a sudden they move from 0.01 to 10% giving. It's made in tiny steps of saying, that is my commitment, and sometimes it takes a lifetime to unfold. I'm going to tell you a vignette now, because sometimes the voice of the Spirit is not only that sweetness of a gentle whisper, but of a challenge. Sometimes the Spirit comes to us not only from within, but from those around us. This is a true story, happened in an Episcopal church. The beginning part is sad. The, the rector ran off with the organist. One of those stories. And leaving the congregation, of course, in shambles and tatters. And so the vestry decided they needed to have a retreat together immediately after to figure out what they were going to do. And the first part of that retreat was much of the hand-wringing and woe is me and pity us and how could he possibly do something like this and, and the kind of rector that they really wanted and all of this and just going on. And there was one noticeable vestry person who hadn't said a word. Now, he happened to be an MD, and he was a person, he wasn't one of the wardens, but he was a person that others looked to. He had wonderful insights, but he hadn't said a word, and so one of the vestry members said, Sam, um, why are you so quiet? What, what are you thinking? And his first response was, you don't want to know what I'm thinking. But that only created that mystery. Oh, well, of course we want to know. What, what are you thinking? Okay. I'm thinking we got what we deserved. Which didn't sit very well with everybody else when he first said it. He said, what I'm talking about is we have certain expectations about the clergy, but also about what we want our congregation to be. But that takes time and talent and treasure to make happen. And I've been thinking actually for some time, and this only underscores the whole thing, that we need to make that commitment of tithing. If we want the kind of rector we, quote, think we deserve, then we need to put our money where our mouth is. It was a pregnant moment, not only for the vestry, but for the whole of the congregation. And of course, that rippled out into the whole congregation about that conversation. But it transformed the congregation. And in time, as they made that commitment to be better stewards, to, to tithing, the congregation began to be transformed in ways well beyond anything anyone had in mind, but not beyond what God had in mind. Stop and remember whose you are. Look to regard the endless bounty of God's gift to you and to the whole of the world. Listen in response to calling to the voice of the Spirit in your life and in Trinity's life, I can only say that the transformation will be incredible among you. Amen.
As you are able, please stand. Let us join together in the Nicene Creed, setting our hearts upon our God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one good